Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we will cover Unit 9 of the course M256, Software Development with Java. The unit title is Detailed Design. So far, in the previous units, we have covered key phases of software development. We have covered requirement specifications in Unit 2 and developing the conceptual and initial structure model of the core system in Units 3 and 4. And in the last three units, Units 6, 7, and 8, we completed the design of the dynamic models. In this unit, we will cover what's important to be able to complete that design and to start implementing the core system that we have designed in the previous units. In this unit, we will complete the hospital systems implementation model. So it will be uh, ready for coding and testing. We will take some decisions. And these decisions will help us implementing the system. The guideline for taking these decisions will be the main principles concerning software quality, which are to improve the maintainability of the system and to increase reuse of software components. In this figure, you see the relation between our chapters and today we are in the detailed core system design in Unit 9. Main aims of the unit is to uh, find out how the existing Java API can be used to specify the link references and method answers and attributes. We will cover what we call utility class and we see what kind of specifications are required for such kind of a class. Then we cover the idea of refactoring a design and why sometimes this is very important step. In the working system, we have links between different um, objects. And these links can be implemented and stored in an instance variable. In case that variable has one value. We'll find later that if the variable has more than one value, then it will be um, it will be stored in a collection um, variable. In here, you find an uh, excerpt from the class word, where you have the attributes given and the links also listed and also the protocols. If we look at the attributes, you find that some of the attributes are decided to be strings. For example, the attribute name. Some others like capacity is decided to be of type integer. Same as for number of three bits. These are I mean strings, integer, are defined data types in Java language. String is a reference data type, where integer is a primitive data type. Now, what about sex type? At this level, we didn't decide about how we are going to implement that type. But we give an idea to the programmer that 
this is a type that we need to be implement we describe that type for the programmer to find a way to implement this type so the description says whether the word is for a male or female patients and the programmer now at the implementation phase need to find a good way to implement that type so what we say here is that sometimes you may decide about the type because it's very clear about for example take capacity it must be an integer because it's the maximum number of patients that can be on a world at any time so it's an integer uh, number but some other types like sex type we don't know at this level or we may not need to know at this level how it will be implemented we will describe it for the programmer and the programmer will find a good way to implement it in the links you find that we have um, the collection patient uh, sorry patients and um, it references a collection of all kind uh, linked patients objects so it's not only one patient it is a collection of patients so we inform the programmer that we need to implement some collection and the programmer will find, find a way or find the right collection to implement that variable the collection in java is not a data type it's an interface and in the interface a specification of a group of methods which for each method simply declares the methods header and no method body so when the programmer wants to, to implement a collection he or she is having a wide number of choices of collections in Java language and they can implement it the way they want because the collection interface as we mentioned is having only declaration for methods it has no body for the method so they can build the methods that suits the collection they are implementing for example and you will see later in the in the in the chapter that one famous um, collection can be hash sit or hash table and that's also one possible solu uh, solution or one possible choice for the programmer uh, to implement our patient's collection using that particular collection subclass In general, attributes are implemented by instance variables, either reference types or primitive types. If you take, for example, this um, coordinating method appeared in unit 6 for the use case admit patient, you find it has name, sex, M256, date, and team. For example, if you take a name, we say that the name is an instance, an instance of which represents name of patient. Now we can have it as a name type, and the programmer later can decide whether this name type can be implemented by, for example, string, or in case the programmer finds string is not enough for name to implement, he may find a different way to implement it this table shows us um, how we may decide about the data types of our uh, variables you find the information I want to store in my system 
then typical values and based on these typical values I may decide about the type and you find the type with is given with a question mark means I'm trying to guess the right type possibly I may change it in the future so for example if you take capacity in word you find that we have 10 12 15 so clearly integer will be the right choice for this type where if you want for look at the grade in a junior doctor you find one two or three I can't take this as integer because I don't have all possible integers included in this type we want it just to be for one two or three same for um, sex in patient or type in word they can be only male or female so I need to think about one good type to implement these attributes one possible type that we may use is enumerated data type this enumerated data type is a special type that we use to implement um, the type when it has some specific and limited number of values I'm sure that you have covered that in MO5 and in M2 um, 5.7 uh, we use it uh, to implement types like uh, sex type as you can see here and also grade type when I have only one or two or three one two or three values we use this earlier in programming languages you have covered earlier to cover types like weekdays and so on Now we will focus on um, the utility class name. If we decide that name is just um, and need to represent only the name of the person, their surname and their title, then string would not be the right choice. Because in string I cannot separate the title from the first name from the surname. One possible choice that you may think of is having an array of three strings. Each string represents um, one part of the name. One string will represent the title, the other for first name, and the third for surname. Java actually gives us much more better choice by implementing the name as Java class and the title first name and surname will be attributes in that class the class name has also um, or can achieve a lot by being represented by a class because it's a type of class that we call utility class need to work with names is very common in computer systems and we have um, human or persons in every system so we will need to use the name again and again and in most of the cases the name will have the same format title first name possibly second name and sir name now if you want to build a utility class you have to study it very well to be sure that you will cover all the components needed uh, in that case you will be able to use this class again and again in different computer systems now uh, here are some um, specifications or possible specifications for the class name we need uh, to define the class name which is a um, class for a person's name it has attributes title first name and surname all three attributes are of type string to be able to use this class efficiently we need protocols for this class and most important part of protocols is the get classes so we uh, build a method or a protocol for every attribute in the class name get title get first name and get surname 
and each one of them will return for me the attribute um, of the class name. When you build a utility class, you need to equip uh, this class with all the services that likely to be uh, requested in the future. So you may do a kind of wide analysis for the use of this class in your domain um, and in other domains to be able to build all the requirements to build all the services that the class may need in the future. And that will widen the use of this class. Here is more details about the class name now, or I may say the unit utility class name. Uh, of course, to be able to build objects in this class, you need to provide uh, the class with a constructor. And uh, as you see here, uh, we have the constructor name that takes three parameters, title, first name, surname as strings. And the result of calling this constructor will be initializing a new name object with the given attribute values. Now, if you want to equip the uh, class name, the utility class name with more methods to ease the use of this class, we may um, think about some other services that the class can include, like for example, um, equals method, which is actually inherited from the class object. And the class object, as you know, is the uh, root for all classes in Java language. And this class, which is uh, the equals class, um, compare between two classes to find whether they are referring to the same object. So we say um, equals a class returns true if uh, the object is a name object with title, first name, and surname equals to those of the receiver, otherwise it re returns false. So if the two objects are having the same title, the same first name, and the same surname, then it will return true. If anything different in the title or the first name or the surname that then the method equals will return false more methods and can be added to the class name as being a utility class uh, possibly you can add uh, compare to for class name Possibly you may need to order the names in your system uh, alphabetically. So you need to compare between them and sort them in one way or another. Compare to can help you doing that uh, by having the names compared to each other and the um, uh, name that, uh, that uh, get a less score will be sorted or place before names that take or get higher scores. Implementing compare to in name will be very helpful to create a set of names in your system that can be easily compared to each other and easily be sorted. And to implement it in a way that will be also compatible with Java interfaces like comparable interface, you may study how the interface is implemented and what are the specifications of the class that will fit the rules if I may call them of the interface comparable if you look at this you find that um, the method compare to for um, object of type name returns an integer and it's a public method it's meant to return a negative number if the receiver is alphabetically before a name positive integer if the receiver is alphabetically after the name and zero otherwise. So name objects are compared using surname, first name and title name in the order. This specification does confirm 
to the specification of the, the method compare uh, to and the comparable interface. It also consistent with the specification of names equal method and that will help me uh, be sure that I can compare names and consider whether they are equal or not. Now, when my compare to method in class name is consistent with equals, this means that whenever A and B are such that A compare to B returns zero, then A equals B must return true, and of course vice versa. This consistency is important when working with sorted collections, which treat A and B as equal if compared to gives me zero as a result of calling or invoking this method. Of course, if I manage to do that, then specifying equals to match natural equality of objects and compare to to match natural ordering of objects will automatically leads me to high consistency when using these two methods within the utility class name. I just want to remind you that we are now building a utility class as a reusable class because as we have covered earlier, we have, in, especially in unit five, we have design for reuse and design with reuse. Uh, so now, and in the previous slides, we started building the class name as utility class, means we are building it for reuse. So as you noticed and we are doing now, we are selecting the methods carefully in the class name so it can be easily reused in the future. So we are actually practicing the principle and the aspect of component-based development design for reuse. We continue with adding more methods for name class. And when we add any method, we be sure that uh, we are building it in a way that can be easily used and useful for the user. And now we are adding one more uh, method, hash code, that will help the user using my class in a better way. The method hash code is defined in object class and it return, returns an integer value referring to a, uh, a hash code. So when you take any object and call the hash code for that object, it will return you some unique value representing the hash code of that object. We want to implement the same thing for the name class. So our user can um, call the hash code method for any name and get a unique value representing the hash code for that name. This method is very important when we are searching for names in case of a utility class name or for object in general. So the hash code will um, simply uh, ret uh, returns a hash code value for every name in our case. And what does it do? It um, place objects with the same hash code in what we, do, when we, what we call buckets. So now instead of searching a very long list of objects or in our case names, it will divide the names to more than one pocket and when it looks for a name with the same hash code, it will go for one of these pockets which will include list number of names and that will make searching and getting the, uh, the object we are after much faster as we are searching a smaller collection of names or objects. And here is an example of how this method hash code places names in the uh, buckets. 
we need to be sure that this is consistent with also with the equals um, method which means that uh, whenever uh, an equals returns true means I am referring to the same name then the hash code will must must also uh, returns the same value for the hash code because it is the same object another string the another object another sorry method that we are um, uh, adding to our utility class name is to string um, method again to string is a method in the object class Uh, why we need to string method because uh, very commonly for programmers they need to have um, uh, more information about their objects and one of the methods that help me getting more information about my objects is the method to string uh, which returns a meaningful textual representation of the receiver object here we give you the specification of the method to string um, and the precondition returns a string representation of the receiver's title, first name, and their name. After completing the utility class name, you can have now a look at the full description of this class. It has three attributes and it has a constructor. Uh, talking about the protocols we have added, we have get methods for all the attributes title, first name, surname it has a method equals which return a boolean value and you can have a look at the post condition for that method also hash code method compare to method and to string method so full specification of the class name is here now it is very ready to be implemented and we assume that this utility class with all the methods and the attributes added and also the constructors will be very ideal class to represent names in information systems because we have considered all possible uses of this class we have considered the compatibility between its methods um, uh, and we have built it in a way that will ease the use or the reuse of the class based on the principle of component based development design for reuse. Now we cover the term refactoring, uh, which basically means amending the system's structure while returning its behavior. We do refactoring to improve the quality of the system. As you remember, we have main uh, two main qualities that we think about when we are building our system and that should be always when building any um, uh, software and um, information and computer system it's reusability and maintainability so now we go back to our um, system structure and basically the core system structure and see what can we improve uh, keeping in mind that we need to return the behavior of the system uh, we start by viewing the structural part of the implementation model and we look at three classes that we have decided to have in our system which are patient, doctor sorry, four classes patient, doctor, junior doctor and consultant doctor we easily can identify common features between the four classes uh, in patient class and doctor class we have attribute name and we have the method get name whose specifications are identical so we need a way um, to define the method get name and the attribute name without a need to repeat it in all the classes that these attributes and methods have if you look at the junior doctor and the consultant doctor they are both 
doctors. So you feel like there's an umbrella that can have both junior doctor and consultant doctor under it. And that umbrella may be called doctor. Now if you compare patient to doctors, they are both human, but they play different roles. Means any doctor can be patient sometime. So there must be common feature between patient and doctor because both at the end they both are persons or human. Now if you look at doctor and patient as being human and they have common features and we can um, decide about those common features, we can easily understand the system and we can in the future easily maintain it. So what we do is we, we may generalize the classes doctor and patient using a higher level class such as for example person class. If we have a class called person that have so that has a name and a method get name, then both doctor and patient can use this class attributes and methods. To do that, the objects must be conceptually similar. Doctor and patient are conceptually similar because they are similar entities. So we can have a superclass for them called person. For example, if you took word, word has a name and has a git name, but it's not, or it is not conceptually similar to patients and doctors. So it cannot be part of this solution. Now we have built person class and we decided that person class has attributes and behaviors common in both patients and um, doctors, but how we are going to use this? How we're going to be able to reach the attribute and behavior in person class and use it by doctor and patient? One way to do that is inheritance. And in inheritance, we make doctor and patient subclasses uh, of the class person, which we call the superclass, and by this, they will be allowed to reach the attributes and behaviors in the superclass person and use them. The other way is to use the composition where we make one class a part of the other class. So maybe in patient or doctor classes, we may compose an object of type person and by that the classes will be able to use the attributes and behaviors of a class person being part of the bigger class patient or doctor. When using composition uh, and when a class uh, Q is part of a class P, if class P want to perform any method that's implemented in a class Q, then it will just need to forward that message to the class composed in it and the class composed in it will perform the method. This is what we call forwarding method of P um, to the corresponding message in Q. When both class is a doctor and patient compose a person as a part of these classes, they will be easily um, having the name attribute defined automatically by this composition. And if they want to perform the method get name, they just need to forward um, uh, the order to this method and the method will implement it. This is how the class doctor will look like, for example, 
same will be done with the class um, person so the class doctor will um, have an attribute of type person and a method automatically being part of class doctor the method get name will be part also of the protocol of class doctor so now a name is already defined within the class person and by um, forwarding the method get name to the class person's object this method will be implemented as in um, person class considering uh, composition compared to inheritance they have two different views uh, when involving entities when we use composition and we uh, compose a person within the doctor we are saying that a doctor is sometimes uh, uh, um, a need to play a person's role or we say in a different way uh, a doctor is a person uh, at one point and a doctor at a different point means when he is in his hospital then he's a doctor otherwise he is just like a normal person this means that the um, the doctor is actually wrapped around uh, its inner person object so he's a person appearing as a doctor or he's a person appearing like, as a patient uh, and so on and that's very much natural uh, comparing to what we have in real life now if we want, uh, need to compare between uh, whether we um, use composition or inheritance or see what are the advantages and disadvantages or what are the actual situations when we're using inheritance and composition uh, we first look at one particular aspect which is the potential of reuse as you know reusability is one big aim in software uh, develop, do software engineering and and we will look for uh, the composition and inheritance as um, chances for us to uh, have better and higher usability. So we will choose the one that will give us more usability. Shortly, uh, if you compare the composition and inheritance referring to uh, the reusable potential, you found that composition gives you better usability for objects where inheritance will give you more restrictions or put in the developer more restrictions uh, as sometimes maybe the two classes or two objects in the system are not designed to be under the same umbrella of a superclass so composition is more flexible way when considering uh, reusability Actually, even in uh, uh, flexibility, uh, when you design um, doctor and patient and subclasses of person, then you will find difficulties in the future to um, uh, define doctor as being patient. Whereas that will be much easier when you use composition. That will be much easier um, in case of composition than in case of um, inheritance. In this example, we see how um, composition will give me a clear idea that um, when I'm using composition, only one person need to be defined for the system as you can see both consultant doctor one and patient 202 are sharing the same person at point at one point the consultant is um, getting um, poorly and visiting the hospital this time as being patient so with composition the same person object is shared between the patient and the consultant object where if we use inheritance then we need 
to create two distinct disti distinction um, objects and that will um, would, will mean that another copy of the same information will be redundantly included in the system. If we come to the point uh, regarding reducing code duplication, uh, reducing code is an advantage of both uh, methods uh, of implementation. So composition will reduce the code for sure. Uh, and inheritance will also reduce the code in the system. As we mentioned in the previous slide, uh, composition showed us exactly and clearly that it will reduce the code in the system and it will reduce the um, storage amount of information in the system. Same for the inheritance, if the superclass can um, define and implement uh, methods uh, used in its super uh, subclasses, then of course that will um, prevent programmers of repeating the same declarations of variables and the same implementations of methods. Now we show you how uh, this class person is implemented in the hospital system and we decided after all these discussions that in this particular situation the um, using the, the person class by composition is much better for us than using it by inheritance. This doesn't mean that always um, the composition is better than inheritance. No, in this situation, considering all the requirements we have from the hospital system and the number of attributes and the number of methods common between the two uh, classes, doctor and patient, we find that uh, building it by composition is much better for us and uh, for our implementation. This is the full uh, description of the class person after considering using it by composition in our design. More features are uh, discussed here. Um, we are now repeating the same thing about uh, using equals and using compare to, which were also discussed in the uh, utility class name. As you can see, now we are reducing the number of attributes that need to be defined in both classes and um, personal class, like uh, in this case, help me in not repeating and um, specifying what are the attributes, for example, in a class patient. This reduces the workload and the processing system load. Uh, this is the end of our recording for Unit 9, uh, Detailed Design Unit. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.